From the time Deputy President Shegadi Gashagwa publicly reprimanded Johnson Sakaja, Azimio has spotted and they have been using that loophole to create rifts in Kenya Kwanza. I have seen James Orengo commenting on that debacle. I have seen Wajakoya commenting on that debacle. I've seen the MP of Bumula also commenting on that debacle. Everyone is jumping in, including Edwin Sifuna, who is the ODM Secretary General. I won't bother reading what he wrote today on Twitter, but just know he was really insulting the Deputy President and exploiting what they think is a rift. But the one thing they all do not seem to understand is that the more they up the ante or the attacks, the more DP Rigadi continues to win. They are not even building him down, they are building him up, but they don't seem to get that point completely. And in this video, I want us to discuss how it is that the recent attacks on Deputy President Shigadi Gashagwa have been benefiting him and will continue to benefit him for as long as they continue attacking him. But before we get into that, if you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. For some leaders on this earth, today, in the past and even in the future, the path to leadership is very easy for them because perhaps it's a family name that will boost them there, perhaps it's family wealth or personal wealth. But for the greater divide, since we left the monarchy system, the ability to withstand adversity is what builds them as leaders. One such person is David in the Bible. David was chosen by God to become the leader of Israel. At the time, what was he doing? Taking care of sheep or goats, something like that. The king wanted to kill him. Nothing was working for that guy. But through that adversity and the fact that he overcame it and kept on doing what he needs to do, the people came to love him and he became the king. The very same thing we saw with President William Ruto. Every newspaper you opened, he was being attacked. Every TV station, he was being attacked. Every radio station, he was being attacked. Even in the communities where people are talking, in Kamkunjis and other areas, everyone was attacking him. And because of that, a majority of the people who voted preferred William Ruto as their presidential candidate. Some people even voted for William Ruto and they didn't even understand his manifesto. It is a serious flaw in human beings. Genetically, human beings are predisposed to always side with the underdog. I'll give you an example. If a 20-year-old is fighting a 15-year-old teenager, everyone will rush in the defense of the teenager and castigate the 20-year-old. And if a 25-year-old is fighting with a 30-year-old somewhere in the streets, no one cares because both of them are men. But the moment we can visibly see that you are not equals, this person is automatically bigger than the other, be it politically, physically, socially, or in any other aspect. The moment human beings can see that, they will always side with the underdog. President William Ruto was the underdog. Raila Odinga was the untouchable big bad wolf. And that is why people sided with William Ruto. Now people don't get that. That they are the ones who empowered William Ruto to become president by attacking him. Remove the attacks, William Ruto would never have become president. And now the same people do not learn lessons. They are now back again, attacking Deputy President Shigadi Gashagwa, saying we will impeach you. You are a tribalist. You are this and that. There is now a negative narrative that has started in the media going round. I've seen it uh, on, I won't mention the media houses, but the narrative is already circulating that the DP is a tribalist because every time he's talking, he's talking about Kikuyu businesses. He's not thinking about the other Kenyans. That kind of attack is now beginning to make him a presidential candidate. Every sword has to go through fire and every politician who doesn't learn from history will always provide their enemies with the fire required for them to be refined to then on finish them off in the ballot box. So that's the first way that the DP is benefiting from all these attacks that you have been seeing left, right, center. They are preparing him and ensuring that he emerges at the end of that fund is full of fire as a legitimate presidential candidate. He is not yet there, but they are ensuring that he gets there. Number two, these attacks on Deputy President Shigadi Gashagwa are also benefiting him in this way. After the end of Uhuru Kenyatta's tenure as president, he still remained to be the de facto Mount Kenya leader. And Rigadi Gashagwa has been challenging to get those rights. And it has been a very difficult endeavor for him. Even the Mount Kenya elders are divided. There is a faction that says it's Uhuru Kenyatta. There is a faction that says it is Uhuru Kenyatta and Rigadi. There is a faction that says it's Rigadi. So there's a lot of confusion. But these attacks are beginning to make it very, very clear 
who the Mount Kenya leader is. Rigathi Gashago was very clear when he told Sakaja to stand down on the removal of Matatus from CBD. And he said that the reason behind that move is because it would touch on the Mount Kenya people who are doing businesses. And the reality is that most of the people in business in Nairobi are Kikuyus. And it makes sense because even when you look at where Mount Kenya is in Nairobi, the distance is very minuscule. That is why most of them are able to navigate from upcountry to CBD, so on and so forth. It's a very short journey and that is why most of them are urbanized. So when they say that the DP is a tribalist, he's only thinking of uh, the Kikuyu businesses, he's only talking about Mount Kenya, he's only talking about Kahawa and things that are being exported from Mount Kenya. Unknown to them, they're giving him his first victory. Most people from Mount Kenya, when they're watching the TV and the news, they're saying that, hey, there is a fellow here who every time he's talking, he's talking about our interests. And any time he's talking about our interests, the others are castigating him. So now they're saying, hmm, I think uh, this guy is the one to lead us because any time he's talking, he's talking about our interests. And I saw the DP uh, just the other day he was on TV. It was a vernacular station, so I was depending on a friend to translate for me. And he was saying, how could he be a tribalist when he's the one who told uh, the Gema community in Nairobi not to vote for Igade, who is one of their own, and to vote for Sakaja? He gave a number of reasons that made sense. But nonetheless, even if, let's just assume he was a tribalist, the way some people are saying he's a tribalist, even if he was, by calling him a tribalist, Yet he is a man who is fighting two wars. He has to finish his war in Mount Kenya, whereby he has to emerge as the Mount Kenya leader, de facto leader, before then he can come to start fighting for the national cake in 2032. They are already handing him that victory, and they don't know what they are doing. In politics, it's a very bad idea to attack somebody. Because politics is not a monarchy. All politicians have to go to the ballot, and it's the people who decide. And like I told you, human beings are predisposed to always side with the underdog. The person who is most attacked is the person who is most appealing to them because they feel empathy. And the third thing that these attacks have done for DP Rigadi Gashagwa is that they have confirmed to him that in President William Ruto, he has an ally. When President William Ruto was meeting uh, the media at State House, whereby they were asking him questions and whatnot, I actually covered that in a separate video. The issue of Johnson Sakaja and Rigadi Gashagwa came up. And President William Ruto, if he wanted, he could have stirred a storm and he could have picked a side. But what he said is that what is happening, we have a governor in Nairobi who is trying some things, some he's getting right, some he needs more consultation. He did not say that some he's getting wrong. He said that some he needs consultation. So when you weigh that statement, you can automatically tell that the president has chosen to side with his deputy president. Whether or not he supports Sakaja over Rigadi's idea, he still stated that Sakaja needs some form of consultation, which goes back to what Rigadi Gashagwa said, that Sakaja needs to slow down and talk with him about issues that he wants to do in the county, so that if it's going to affect the people from Lima, Kenya, the DP can advise him on how to go about it. So it's the same thing. It has started again. They attacked Ruto and made him president. They don't even understand that. There are so many people that I personally know who would never have voted for William Ruto. But the way he was fought, left, right, center, left, right, center, every media house, every newspaper, every politician, that made people switch camps. They went and voted for the underdog. So just watch the space. It's a very long journey. It's going to be nine years before uh, Rigadi can even be eligible to be on the ballot as a presidential candidate. And this tactic that the opposition has deployed in the very first year, in fact, the first half of the year, if they keep it and uphold it all the way to the very last year before they go for elections, Rigadi Gashago is automatically going to become the sixth president of the Republic of Kenya. And I'm saying that he's going to become the sixth over Musalia Mudavadi, not because he's any better than Musalia. In fact, most people as at now prefer Musalia Mudavadi because he's not combative in nature and they feel comfortable with him. But that does not get people elected. Again, I go back to that point which I said, human beings are genetically predisposed to always side with the underdog. The one who is always attacked, the one who is always picked on, the one who is always discussed negatively, that is the one that a majority of the people side with. So in my opinion, if this keeps up, in 2032 we are going to see the very same repetition of 2022. But as usual, that's just my opinion guys. Do drop me your own comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. 
And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Wafula, hit the subscribe button and you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. Alright guys, adios.